Hello, my internet fans. It's me, Statboy Mike, and I would like to welcome you to this week's installment of Throwback Thursday. The Casa D18 Studios channel continues to sort through the archives of the Jeff Meacham Network, the Simple Man brand, JH95FTW, NoDQ.com, and the Casa channel in order to bring you classic content that you may not have seen in a long time, if ever. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's Throwback Thursdays offering. I love you all. Stat Boy out. And now, preview time. So let's take a look at what's coming your way. Casa D18 Studios, an affiliate of the Jeff Meacham Network, Multiverse of Media, proudly presents this retro content from NoDQ.com. Hello everyone, welcome to the No DQ Review here on NoDQ.com and the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Aaron Rift No DQ. Whoa, El Virtuoso just went blurry there for a second. So for those of you that missed it, of course, last week, El Virtuoso has graciously stepped in to fill in for Virtue over the next six, seven weeks, however long we have left of Virtue's suspension, but before we get to El Virtuoso, we have Big Vito back here today. How's it going, Vito? Everything is all right. Who's this bum? This is Virtue's temporary replacement, El Virtuoso. He actually did a really good job last week, although apparently... He's a mark. Of course he's going to do a job. Ooh. <laughs> well, here's Is my what... picture clear? Your picture is clear, but here's the thing that happened with El Virtuoso. He, he stirred the pot a little bit this week. Apparently... He messaged Jexy and started sending inappropriate photos. I'm not sure what happened. I just heard this as a rumor. And Jexy's not here. She apparently has a problem with El Virtuoso. So now we have three people. Last week we had three people. It's a little bit of a mess right now. Hopefully next week. Time out, time we'll out. First of all, Jexy asked for Mexican cuisine recipes. That's what I was sending her. Okay, let's get that clear. Okay. Wait please. a minute. So you mean to tell me, Aaron, you're the boss and founder of the No DQ. You have you make this is how you make your money in your company. So you mean to tell me that there is a sexual harassment scandal, the first one of its kind in your company? Well, apparently it was just over food, but I guess just asking somebody about their favorite food is considered harassment now. I'm not sure what the deal is. Listen, I sending people zucchinis is not, you know, it can be interpreted a, a, in a different way. I guess so, but regardless of the case, hopefully Chexy will be back. I'm assuming it was just a misunderstanding. Am I right, El Virtuoso? Yeah, and we're going to take the spotlight off of me, and at some point during this show, we will talk about... The real sexual harassment, Jonathan Coachman, WWE, ESPN. Okay, I liked what you guys did right there, but that's definitely going to be a topic we talk about. But no, 
Jexy and I are fine. I think she's just under the weather because she went ahead and made that Mexican cuisine and ate it, and it probably didn't agree with her. Hmm. Interesting. Story. I don't know. I, I, I think I think we have you know since you're new here, the the key word on this group is erroneous. Erroneous. Some wedding crashes, right? Learn it, son. Just learn it. All right. You know, you're gonna cut a promo both? on me too, like Jexy did last week. Well. I mean, you come barging in here. I was out last week because, like, you know, I had a couple things I had to take care of, and I don't like you. And second, like, you know, like, I don't like you. And I just, when people crash my party, when I'm bringing in the ratings, I don't like you. And if you knock the ratings down, I'm going to come to your house and beat the shit out of you. Ooh. Well, fair enough, you know, but I hope you give me a chance like Jexy did. And last week's show, ratings did well. You know, what, people well, missed you, Vito, though. People, people missed you, Vito. I don't know if anybody missed Virtue, though. Well, you know what it is. You know, just so you know, you know, I am one of the damn best trollers that ever lived in an ODQ, you know, chat room. And we got a lot of people who get hot in that room. Ain't that right, Aaron? And, you know, we suspend a lot of people, you know, when you talk about people's moms, you know, like there's some, some goof named Scotty McPherson, you know what I mean? And, uh, you know, Scotty, he gets his, you know, he gets his, his feathers ruffled and he talks about people's wives. And then there's a guy named John Dowell, you know, moderator. That's a, yeah, and he's another guy who talks some, you know, jibber jab. But you know, when you're talking to professionals and you guys are sitting home with your moms, and you're sitting, you know, in your basement, you're watching TV, having your rice roni, you know, your check cereal, and you're playing on your computer, leave it to the professionals, guys. Just don't insult people. And when you see, you know, when you notice I'm a three-time troll champion, you got to come to grips with it. You know, I let it go a little bit. You know, Aaron, you know, congratulations. I'm being a new champ this month. But, uh, you know, once you're three-time champ, there's really nothing to go for. You know, Michael Jordan's got six. I got three. I got a little bit of time to get another three. You know what I mean? So, El Virtu... What are, how Oso. El Virtuoso. Not oh. Uso. Not El Virtuoso. El Virtuoso. All right. El Scratch You, my culo. How are you? You know, are you doing all right tonight? Yes, and you know we gotta we gotta get the ball rolling here because there's a lot to so talk go about. Ahead. Because we have to cover previews and predictions for WWE Fastlane. Oh. All right, let's bring it. Go so, ahead. all right, the first match I have six matches, Aaron. Yes. So hopefully I get them all. But let's talk about them. No particular order. But the first one's a tag team match with females. It is Becky Lynch and Naomi versus Carmella, who currently holds the Money in the Bank contract. And Natalia. So it's a tag team match. I don't really have much to say on this. Um, I'll give you my picks, I, I guess, after I hear yours. Big Vito, what do you think about that match? Who's going over? Filler match. Uh, Carmella really hasn't been any, you know, really doing anything with the money in the bank or just anything in general. I would say it's a toss up. It doesn't matter who goes over. Uh, Carmella's not going to cash it in because there's no champion involved. So it's a filler match, and uh, it's just something to open the show up with. You got a prediction, or did I miss it? I think I'm just going to call it down the middle because it really it is it doesn't matter match. Okay. And if I had to pick somebody, I'd say Carmella because she has the money in the bank, but she's been kind of losing lately. So, I mean, it could go the other way. Like I said, Fouls, a match like that is really not important of uh, – you know, who's going to win as long as it's a quality match. And I think that's what they're looking to get out of it. Right. What about you, Mr. Rift? Well, I think Ver <coughs> I think Vito make made a good point about the whole Carmella winning because she's the Money in the Bank contract holder, and she should be getting built up strongly. I, I hate when the Money in the Bank contract holder is always losing all the time. I think they should be booked stronger. I know the idea is that they lose all the time, you know, paying their dues or whatever, and then eventually they'll win. But I think she should be portrayed stronger, especially if she's going to successfully cash it in at some point. So I like Vito's logic there in Carmella winning. Um, however, I, I see the baby faces winning. I'm going to go with Naomi and Becky Lynch to win this one. I sense there's still a chance Becky might be facing Charlotte at WrestleMania if Asuka is facing... Um, Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania, but we'll see. I, I sense the I sense the babyface team will win, but I, I would not have a problem with Carmella winning. 
as long as, like Virtue said, it's a good match, that's what's most important. Where, who's Virtue? What? Who's Virtue? I, he's suspended. Like, like you said, as Virtue said. I thought Is I said Vito. I thought I said Vito. No, are you drinking on the job again, Aaron? Okay. Aaron, I agree. I agree. Becky and Naomi's team's going to win. I think Natty is going to take the pinfall here. And it's interesting that you said Becky and Charlotte at WrestleMania because that's two of the four horsewomen. And another rumored match is Bailey versus Sasha Banks for WrestleMania. So we'll see what WWE does. Guys, you, I've told you, I, 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 El Virtuoso, like I know my predictions, you know, are, pr are pretty uh, concrete. And, they, you know, their uh, philosophy of my thinking is I would love to see Carmella cash in on Raw. That's what I want to see. That's where I really want it to go. I heard she's had that for a while now. So, I mean, time's running out, right? Yeah. She's got like three months left. Yep. So, I'm, I'm kind of hoping she jumps ship and runs over there during WrestleMania, cashes in, and I think that'll be the, big, the biggest pop of the night when she cashes in. Yeah. Interesting. And go ahead, Aaron. I was going to say there's a possibility, too, that that could play out if it's going to be Charlotte versus um, – Asuka at WrestleMania, and then it's Alexa Bliss versus, say, Nia Jax at WrestleMania. You could have Carmella cash in on the Raw champion. That way, you don't have Asuka involved in the cash in, and you can do it that way. So I, I like that idea from Vito, having Carmella cash it in on Raw. I, I'm definitely a fan of it. There you go. There you go, everyone. Aaron, you'll like this next match based on my research. Shinsuke Nakamura. I don't know how you say that name, versus Rusev, one-on-one, -on -one, mano a mano. Aaron, thoughts? Who's going over? Well, you <laughs> could just call him Shin. And by the way, happy Shinsuke Nakamura Day. Happy Nakamura Day to you, El Virtuoso. I think it's going to be an easy win for Shin. I think it's just setting him up for WrestleMania to look as strong as possible. Unfortunately, like our old buddy Virtue said, I mean, Rusev Day is, is never going to get that, that big run. He's only going to go so far. So I think this is an easy one to predict. I think it's going to be Shin all the way. What do you think, Vito? It's going to be Shin all the way, but I, got, I, I, I think they're wasting every week. I think they waste Rusev, and it's a shame. And uh, I, I, this is like a, a match I'm not even interested in because it means nothing. There's no, it's just like the girls' match. It's a filler match, so they exactly. just put it on. So filler match. Let's go to the next one. All right, I pick Nakamura, and it's interesting that his version of Rusev Day when he sang to me that totally buried Rusev Day because it's the guy that can't speak English that just did that gimmick on television. So next U.S. title, United States title, Randy Orton challenging the glorious Bob. Rude. Is it Bob Rude, Aaron? Well, that's how I like to refer to him as, Bob Rude. Okay, so who's who's going to win this one? Well, what I find interesting is that Jinder Mahal defeated Randy Orton at the pay-per-view. And as of this recording, it's still a one-on-one -on -one match between Orton and Rude with no Mahal in sight. I figured they might add Mahal as the third guy in the match, but... If they don't add him as the third guy in the match, I really don't understand why you have Randy Orton lose to Mahal in the first place unless Mahal's getting the title shot at the pay-per-view. The whole thing just doesn't make sense to me personally. Um, as far as who I think wins, I, I think if Mahal's not in the match, he might interfere and get involved because I think he cut some promo on, on WWE's YouTube channel stating that he should be uh, going for the title and he might try to sabotage the match or something. Um, I think there's going to be some sort of shenanigans. Um, what do you think, Vito? I think this is another filler match, guys. Where, <laughs> like you said, like they didn't they didn't know what they were going to do with Randy Orton. He loses before the title match, and he should have went over or got disqualified, you know. But then they're trying to make Mahal, you know, keep him relevant. They gave him a win over Orton at a very poor, opportune time. So, and I think the Bob Roode title run is not going over as, as big as they think that it is. And I think it's like a dud. That's why they put Randy Orton in there to bring some interest. I would hope to see Randy Orton win, but I don't know. It's a toss up. Like I said, I think three matches, your name, three matches, it's doesn't matter. Yeah, it seems to be a running yeah. theme here with this pay-per-view. Fast lane. It can't, Happened fast enough, I guess. Uh, I'm going to say Rude retains. 
Uh, Jinder Mahal probably gets involved somehow. We'll go with that. Uh, the women's title match, the SmackDown women's title match, Ru- Ruby, Riot. <laughs> excuse me, Ruby Riot challenging Charlotte, the Queen, Ric Flair's daughter. Vito, you're shaking your head. Take it. What, what do you think? Inexperienced. She does nothing for me. Charlotte Flair, go ahead. It was a, another shitty match. Go ahead, Adam. I mean, that <laughs> four, fourth, fourth filler match in a row, I think. I think it's pretty safe to say. Um, by the way, I don't think I made a prediction for that previous match. I'm going to say Rude retains due to the outside interference. I don't know if he's going to okay. beat Orn, but I think maybe it'll be a DQ or a count out. Some, something is going to lead to Bobby or Bob Rude, whatever, retaining the title. Now, as far as this match goes, again, I really don't care about it. Um, I don't know what you guys thought, but I felt like Ruby Riot's promo on SmackDown was just really generic. It felt like she was reciting her lines off of a script. Um, yep. wasn't really a big fan of it. Um, I just see this as somebody for Charlotte to beat leading into WrestleMania. I think anything other than Charlotte winning in dominant fashion would be a big mistake at this point. So got to go with Charlotte on this one. Absolutely. I think it's a waste a waste of time. It's a filler match. The girl's inexperienced. She doesn't have the size, the skill, the experience to hang with Charlotte. This should be a quick match, you hope. There's going to be some outside interference, but I, like I said, filler match, four for four. Go ahead, El yeah. Virtuoso. We agree again. Charlotte's going to retain. However, I do think those other Riot Squad members will get involved somehow outside the ring to make this go a little bit longer. Because, like you said, Vito, filler. All right, we got two matches now that are... One of them's predictable, probably. But at least you got some talent in these matches. So the tag title match. The Usos, the reigning tag team champs of SmackDown, are going to defend against the New Day. And so I hear they had a pretty good feud last year. Now, is this overplayed? You know, with the New Day, you got three members, so you never know what two they'll use, who will be on the outside. So, Vito, what what are your thoughts here? Um, are they going to – they'll probably be given 15 or 20 minutes on this one. So there could be some really good stuff. What do you think? I think this will be the opening match of the pay-per-view. I think they're going to start off with these guys because when the Usos are the, are the uh, first match on the card, they get the crowd up. They have a. It's going to be a very good match, but – I see the Usos retaining because it's just repetitive booking on what they got. And it's repetitive because it's all they got. So I think this is match number one on the night to start the pay-per-view. It'll probably go 20 minutes. A lot of fall pin for false finishes, but I see the Usos retaining. Yeah, I agree Good with point, you, Aaron. Aaron. I agree completely with Vito. I think it's going to probably be the opening match and it's going to, set a similar tone like last year. I think it was the Battleground pay-per-view. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I think it was Battleground and maybe SummerSlam too where they had the first match on the show or the kickoff match or whatever. Um, so I think I think it will kick off the show. Um, not necessarily be the kickoff match because they got, they got lesser matches to be the kickoff. If anything's going to be the kickoff, I think it'll be the women's tag team match. Um, I see the Usos winning and possibly facing the Bludgeon Brothers at WrestleMania. What do you think, El Virtuoso? Yeah, I mean, if you have the New Day win at this point, take all that steam away from the Usos because it's supposed to be their WrestleMania moment this year. Right? So they have to, they have to retain. I mean, you know, it, it'll be close. The new, you know, five, six, ten false finishes, like you guys said. But I'm going to say Usos retain. And again, this this is going to seem like a SmackDown episode more than a pay per view. Vito, I kind of hope Carmella cashes in at this show to give it something to make make people like, what just happened. I, I don't know, but I think Car- Carmella is actually going to cash in at WrestleMania, yeah, and she's going to have a pick at a litter. And if they really do it right, guys, I'm going to throw this at you. You know, it's a money in the bank, right? So you're allowed to cash in on title matches. What happens? One of the men's champions gets knocked out, and he's left laying, and there's the belt right there. Carmella comes running down. I mean, that place will freaking come off its feet. The place will rock, thinking she's going to cash in. All of a sudden, the guy starts to come to. She she fleds. The first woman's match, she, the second, the first woman's title match, she runs out. She doesn't cash in, right? She's there. She's there. She's there. And then the third one, I could see her sliding out from the back. Cracking somebody over the head, cashing in one, two, three, 
cashing in her money in a bank, running out of the place like a chicken shit heel. And that's the way I like to see it. But wouldn't it be great if they used her as a teaser for one of the men's matches? Yeah, I see where you're going with this, Vito. WrestleMania, say they have AJ and Nakamura or whatever, and the, and she does it there. Obviously, it's not going to happen because that's a men's title. But the tease, and then she comes out for one, you know, for the Raw women's match and does that there, but doesn't cash in and then does it. But again, is that WWE going to give someone like Carmella that much run at a Mania? But I do, I do Good like point. that theory. That to me, that's entertaining. It's the only way they can go to make it relevant because she's had it for a year. And if they do it like that and they saved all this hype for one show, that's the show to do it. Yeah, I really like that idea, Vito, because you would think logically she would want to cash it in at WrestleMania. So she's going to do everything she can to successfully cash it in. So why not try it for both matches? Not one, but two. Maybe try to cash in the SmackDown match first since she's part of the SmackDown brand. And then as the swerve, she comes out for the Raw match. I like it a lot, Vito. I think, uh, but the guys, there's no law that says she can't cash in for a me- for the men's one of the men's matches. No, I was feeling you on that one because, and again, you know, it's not the late '90s, so WWE can't think outside the box like that. But I, again, you know, if people would be if, tweeting about that instantly. Now, just for say, the Lesnar and Roman Reigns match wasn't last. It was before. It was in the middle of the card, right? And say Roman Reigns gets the win, and then Brock destroys him, leaves him in a table, and he's in the middle of the ring, and he's out with the belt on top of him. Out comes Carmella. The place would go ballistic. <laughs> Instant ballistic. face, yeah, they, <laughs> definitely. And she she actually gets on top of him, and all of a sudden he lifts an arm. And she realizes, uh uh-oh, he's coming too. No, no, I don't want to cash it in. Grabs her bank and runs it out. But to be that close to winning the men's title. Yep. Everybody would be talking about that, Vito. But, again, it's they don't think outside the box these days. All right, the main event of Fastlane is the WWE Championship. Yeah, six matches. Wow, we blew through this quickly. Yep, wow, filler, 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 filler. So it's a six-way match. We've got Baron Corbin. Versus Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn versus John Cena versus Dolph Ziggler versus AJ Styles, the champ. Uh, interesting here with Cena in the match. Aaron, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, I don't think WWE is going to get away from their Styles Nakamura match at Mania, but go ahead. Well, right, think? because I still think it's going to be Cena versus Undertaker. I think this whole Rey Mysterio thing was probably a smokescreen by WWE to throw people off. This match, to me, also feels like filler. I hate to say it. I mean, I'm sure it'll be a really good match with these six guys. It'll be very entertaining. But I still feel like it's just being thrown together, six guys that really don't have anything else going on until the WrestleMania build kicks into high gear. I think there will be something with Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn since they teased it already on SmackDown. Um, I don't I don't see any other change of plans. I think AJ is going to retain and go on to face Nakamura as planned. What do you think, Vito? So this is a title match with yeah. AJ um, putting his title up, right? Yep. Now, yep. AJ, AJ, none of these guys are any of these guys in the WrestleMania. Just AJ because he's a title holder, correct? Right. Right now. Right now. All right. So AJ has everything to lose. Yep. <clears throat> nothing to gain. Well, but they did make it clear, like, if he loses this match, Fido, he gets his rematch. So they all basically said AJ's still in the main event at WrestleMania. More or less, right? Okay. Now, with all these guys in the match, like, it's a filler match because they have to do something with Corbin and all the other guys. And they them throwing Cena in this match, you know why they're throwing him in both shows? It's to draw ratings yeah. because they're lacking ratings. So that's the only reason Cena's in the match. Now, I think, you know, I think that AJ Styles will retain on some kind of falsity. He might get the pin on Cena because Cena beat him. That's what I could see happening to give him some credibility going into uh, Mania. But uh, anybody else in that match where I think is going to win or pull pull a rabbit out of the hat? No, not not anybody. I don't see it happening. And you know what? Out of all the cards tonight... I think that uh, 
probably the best match of the night will be the Usos and the New Day. And I yep. think everything else was uh, a filler match, just something to put together. I agree yep. on that. And I'm going to go, I'm going to say AJ retains. And to, to be honest with you, that was a rough predictions and preview show because it's a filler pay-per-view. Like, why are they even doing it? Oh, because they have to have something for the network. Well, yeah. This is the last, this is the last single branded pay-per-view starting with uh, Backlash. It's going to be dual branded from now on. All right, guys, let's let's talk about something more interesting here. And I know in past videos, Vito, I had to watch all these no DQ review shows so I could kind of see what your guys' style was. And I know you've talked about Enzo More, Rich Swan. They're fired from what you know their legal problems with sexual, you know, rape and sexual. Or, well, though, what did um, Rich sexual Swan domestic, domestic, domestic for Rich violence. Swan and Enzo? You know, was accused of rape. So Jonathan Coachman gets hired by the WWE and leaves the SBN. I, I wasn't privy that he was going to be put into a legal document of sexual harassment from an ESPN employee, a female employee. Um, I guess he emailed her and it turned from business into more of like what you'd ask somebody on a dating website. I'm not sure, but here's the thing. His name is on this legal document, but he is currently an announcer not suspect, you know, WWE has him right in the spotlight. He probably told WWE what was maybe going to happen. You know, I guess that's what hurt Enzo is he didn't say anything. Vito, I want to start with you because you have people that have been fired and lost their jobs for, for stuff like this, ju just being accused of something. But here you have Jonathan Coachman just getting his job and on a big television show. Go ahead. <laughs> I know Jonathan Coachman. I work with him, and I never knew of any of this garbage. And like I said on the, uh, another show, I says, you know what? It's a shame when people can ruin other people's rep reputations because of accusations. You know, if he did it, if he didn't do it. But just the f fact that it came out in social media, it puts a crink, crimp in his arm. It's just like the Enzo thing. Enzo was never charged. Enzo was never found guilty. Enzo, it kind of died. You know, once the girls stop with all the stuff, this thing, you never heard a peep out of it. The Rich Swan thing, he had a fight with his wife. It got out of hand. You know what I mean? If somebody caught it, police were involved, and charges were dropped. Now, Rich Swan lost his job. Enzo immediately lost his job. Um, John and Coachman still worked Monday Night Raw, so you don't know what ramifications are going to be. Um, you don't know about the Roman Reigns accusations. You don't know about a Brock Lesnar accusation. And all these accusations make for bad press and bad for the guys. And I feel bad for the guys because, you know what, if you did do something and you own up to it, hey, hey, great. If you didn't do something and this shit comes out, it's bad because it ruins your family life. If you're married, you have kids and all this stuff, you know. I know Coachman. I think he's a great guy. I had a good time with him. Not a bad, not a bad dude. You know what I mean? So hopefully this thing gets settled and it gets cleared and it goes on. But the power of social media is a killer and the power of social media is detrimental to people's careers. Mm -hmm. You look at the, um, uh, the Mauer guy from the news. You look at all the NFL football players. All they got to do is is uh, kick a can the wrong way and they're in the yep. news. You know what I mean? Yep. No matter what it is. So you're talking about pretty powerful stuff when it comes to these people. And I feel for all these guys because it's not cool. And you know what? You know, I had like somebody uh, accused me of domestic violence back in 2008, right? I didn't do anything. And... Here it was all over the papers and everything, but nobody took the time to ask me, hey, Vito, what happened? Once I told them what happened and judge knew it was bullshit and they dismissed it and it was dropped and everything went away, you know, but the damage was done because of the press. So I was like, all right, I'll deal with it. I didn't do anything, but I know it is what it is. To all the guys out there who have this problem, I hope it gets rectified. To all the future guys out there, all the future up-and-coming wrestlers, or no matter what you do, guys, don't shit where you eat. I know everybody has heard this, 
you know, there's plenty of chicks out there. If you're going to do something, be smart about it. Be a gentleman about it. Do something nice. You know, if you want to hit on a girl, make sure she doesn't work with you. You know, there's 10,000 other females out there who, you know, probably dig your style. Go with them. But yeah. if you shit what you eat, it's pretty much you're going to get caught. Aaron, I mean, you run a company and you're a CEO of this here, uh, no DQ. I know that, you know, we might joke around and stuff, but if there's ever come a point where you had this situation, how would you handle it as a CEO of your company? Well, first of all, there's no tolerance for the kind of actions that people are accused of if they are in fact true. And there was a guy who used to be on our channel and our videos and there was actual proof of his actions and he's gone. He's been gone from the yep. site for a while now. So uh, there's no tolerance, but there has to be proof. There has to be some kind of evidence that somebody is guilty of what they're being accused of. And yeah, I feel like right now people are in this situation where they're, they're guilty until proven innocent. And it should be the other way around. You're innocent until proven guilty. And for some of these guys, they're not even being charged and things are getting dropped. So I feel like with Coachman, there's, there's got to be more to this if WWE is going to take any action. And uh, right now, I haven't heard anything about Coachman being punished or anything like that. Coachman has denied uh, the accusations, and WWE says they're going to investigate the matter, and um, that, that might be it. There might not be any more to this story, so we'll, we'll see what happens with it. But um, hopefully it does get resolved. Uh, El Virtuoso, anything you would like to add to this? No, I mean, that answers my questions with, you know, why he left ESPN so abruptly. So he must have knew this was coming down. And even again, you know, if he knew he was innocent, you know, like you said, Vito, the way and Aaron, the companies, one little thing, one little blip on the radar and say you didn't even do anything wrong. It could cost you your career. So uh, it'll be interesting. I'm sure that Aaron will keep us up on the news if anything comes about on this. Um, I'm interested to hear more about Enzo because nothing's happened and he's lost his job. Like that's insane to me. That's insane. That is absolutely insane. And that was a huge uh, accusation from that girl that accused him of rape. So I mean, if he was guilty, wouldn't he be in custody right now? Something I mean, if it was that, it's crazy. But all right, you know, and I, that's always like a sour note talking about that kind of stuff. Let's talk about this. WWE yeah, but good but luck. But good luck to Jonathan Coachman and the WWE to clear this up and correctly handle this. So this way, nobody's reputation gets tarnished. Nobody loses a job. I'm sure that they have the proper people and the proper protocol to handle this. So from the no DQ boys here, I hope it works out. Coach, you know I'm your boy. Get the stuff straight. I hope everything works out for you. And same with those steroid accusations against Roman Reigns. And I heard that somebody making a movie over all that stuff, Bravo, I don't even know what his name yeah, is. Yeah, Johnny John Bravo. Cena, John Cena's picture is going to be – so right now it sounds like just a Hollywood well, ruse. Right now Who he's knows? just been he's just been teasing things, but he's been doing this for week weeks now. And people are like, you know, Crapper get off the can at this point. He, if he yeah. has evidence, he should. He's gonna be, go into hiding. If he has evidence, he should be presenting it. The longer that he waits and delays on this, you know, a lot of people feel like this is just a publicity stunt um, on his part, and he's just trying to get his fifteen minutes of fame or whatever. So. If he's got the evidence, he should be showing it. Otherwise, you know, doing all this teasing and stuff, it, it's just, it's getting old now. Well, taking your 15 minutes of fame, not 30, not 40, not 45, 50, Aaron and Vito. WWE's bringing back the Royal Rumble nice. already this year. Already this year. They're launching something in Saudi Arabia. I, I don't even... So Aaron probably knows more about this than I do, but there's a, a 60,000 yeah. seat stadium. They're doing an event. We don't even know if it's going to be on the network, but it's at the end of April, April 27th, and they've announced a 50 man Royal Rumble match. I, I'm, I'm thinking of a hundred possibilities right now, good and bad. <laughs> Vito, I'll start with you. What are your thoughts on this and, and why? Like, I literally Saudi wrote down Saudi why. Arabia. Saudi Arabia, their biggest stadium, 60,000 people, you're going to go in big. So to do something prestigious, something honorable, something charismatic, 
you're going into the biggest place in Saudi Arabia with all the news, all the press, and having a 50-man battle royal, which has never been done before, in a foreign country that's done for the networks, it's done for the press, it's done to um, revolutionize the Saudi Arabia net, uh, contingent and to get their TV and to get their interest in WWE wrestling. So I could see it as a good move. I don't think it has anything to do with the Royal Rumble that we all know and love, but I think it's a match that is something that's nostalgic and history-making that they're going to do there so the people can feel proud that they had something like that in their country. Yeah. I hey, think good point. Aaron? I think Vito said it perfectly. I think that... Uh, the Royal Rumble has that that name value, and WWE wants to make a first good impression with, with the people in Saudi Arabia and develop that relationship. Um, so I, I think it's a good idea. Um, I don't know how the match will play out. I'm wondering if they're going to cut it down to one-minute intervals or not. I'm, I'm curious to see what they do with that. And, of course, the big question is, will it be on the network or not? They did mention it on, on television, so I think there is a possibility. Considering this is such a big match and this is – such a big move that WWE is making, one would think that if, if anything's going to be a network special, it would be this. Uh, El Virtuoso, any other thoughts you have on it? Well, if the winner actually gets something like a title shot at SummerSlam, yeah. then it almost has to be on the network. And if they're only going to do it once, having a second Royal Rumble in one year that big because of launching in a country, I get that. And I, I must, does the network currently air in Saudi Arabia or is this part of launching it over there? I, I don't even know, but usually they do stuff like that for, for big launches like that. But I don't know. I mean, I would like to see it on the network and I would like to see the winner actually get a shot at something, you know, Braun Strowman. There that would go. be huge for, that would be huge. But yeah, I just thought that was interesting that they're using that name. Uh, for all we know, it could just be non-televised. And they're just using it for the house to make it feel important, and the winner gets nothing. Maybe a crown. Maybe Virtue's crown. Doesn't didn't Virtue call himself King Virtue? Yeah, he did, and he got. Who? Yeah. Exactly. Oh, who? All right. Here's here's what I got next, Vito, because I think you're gonna like this one. Early thoughts. That that's our new thing, uh, Aaron. You need to have a no DQ review shirt that says, "What are your thoughts?" Early thoughts on Ronda Rousey's performance. We've we've got to see her now in action uh, on the mic. Been very shaky at times. Um, she comes out with the smile, which I see a lot of people complaining about that because she's supposed to be a UFC tough girl. But she does turn it into the mean face. There was a whole bunch of stuff that happened in the ring Monday night. So, so Aaron, I'll start with you. What's your early thoughts on Rousey's performance in the ring, both on the mic and physically? I, I know there's been some criticism. I, for one, have been entertained by this whole stuff, you know, Stephanie and Triple H and Kurt Angle and Rousey. Go ahead. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I've been entertained with it so far. I think I think she's doing a very good job. Maybe not a perfect job, but she's new to WWE and she's still getting used to it. So I think over time she will grow as a performer and, and she'll be able to continue to get better on the mic and we'll see how she does in the ring at WrestleMania. Um, I actually wanted to ask Vito about the uh, Samoan drop she did because I know Tommy Dreamer was critical of that move. And uh, Vito, did you see that spot and uh, any advice you would have for Ronda Rousey after seeing that? You know, guys, she's new in the business. She's not going to do everything perfect. I thought it came off okay. And her promos came off okay. And you have to have some facial expressions when you're going out there. So the thing they're making her do is you smile to the crowd, but as soon as you you know twist her, she turns into the, she turns into Ronza Rousey. Smile to your face, kick your ass behind your back. And guys, everybody out there, stop being so critical. She just started and she's in the biggest match of the year with the three most experienced people there are in wrestling. Stephanie is gonna Stephanie is the hell of a wrestler and a worker. So as you saw with the one of the belt when they had the match with the Bellas. And uh Triple H is gonna be in there, you know, talking and uh, Kurt Angle's gonna be guiding her. I think it's gonna be really good. I think everybody's like too hyped on oh, well, what about this? What stop nitpicking. If she was a three-year vet, then she nitpicking, okay. She's brand new and put right into the main spot. 
give her a break. She's doing it fine. She's not going to be perfect. Is she going to make mistakes? Yes. Is she going to learn on the job? Absolutely. Give it a benefit of the doubt, guys. Go easy on it. Yeah, I agree. I agree with uh, both of you, and, and I've been entertained by it. I mean, you know, while we've watched this, you know, we, we saw, you know, a weak landed punch from Triple H to Kurt. We saw Kurt flub some lines. We saw, you know, Rhonda be a little nervous on the mic when she first started talking. But you know what I felt? I, maybe it's because I suspended my disbelief. I didn't, I didn't think, oh, this is all fake. I was drawn into the personality, Stephanie McMahon. You know, she is, she never really puts anybody over other than herself. I mean, from what I've seen of her, she likes to do the ball cutting, you know, and it's, it's, it always seems like, unless it's a spot at WrestleMania where I know she went through a table at the end of the Rollins and Triple H match last year, she just holds this presence of, I'm the queen of WWE. But I think she's going to be handing Rousey a spot on a silver platter, putting her over. And I like seeing that because, you know, it, it could give Rousey that confidence going forward after this mania. If Rousey gets through this, you know, put on the big stage with the big spotlight, she gets through this and looks good. She's going to get all kinds of confidence and quick. Then you can start putting her in title matches or number one contender matches. Vito, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, do you think starting Rod- Rousey off hot like this could really give her some good experience to really make her a main player and will they do that with her going forward i don't know what her but you guys are but you guys are forgetting something right she's already an established star she's like and plus she's a movie star she's not a wrestler so this is the only spot they could put her in she's not some preliminary wrestler she's not a wrestler who went to nxt she hasn't been there for 15 years and coming in and like she didn't wrestle for tna this is a legit rock star. Yeah. This is the only place they could put her. So they had to maximize it. Like I said, she's going to learn. Yeah. Right? And when you when you break in and people, this isn't her first rodeo. She was there with The Rock. So when she was with The Rock, everybody said, oh, she was great. That's now true, Vito. I forgot. WrestleMania yep. 31. That, I, I always forget that part. So when she was with The Rock. She did perfectly fine. So this is not her first WrestleMania. It'll be her second WrestleMania. So she's got some experience under her belt, whether it's great monumental or not, but she's been in the pressure spot and she carried herself good. That's why they brought her back and they signed her. If she would have been a nervous Nelly, they wouldn't be doing this, but now they know they can do it. She's been training. Everything's going to be good. It's a second WrestleMania in the second main event, you know, the Rock and her, that was the main event spot. This is a main event spot. And she's a main eventer right off the bat. So, I mean, they're not going to drown her like Rusev. They're not going to bury her like Mahal. They're not going to Dolph Ziggler her. She is going to be around a long time. Put her in the Jericho stage yeah. where she's going to learn her craft and she's going to be that up, down, but never all the way down. And she's going to be that... Right, she's gonna be right there all the time. That's all I got. You know what I mean? Yeah, it reminds me. It reminds me a lot of like Carl Malone when he came into WCW. He didn't have the experience, but he had the star power. So WCW had to put him in that top spot, and he just had to sink or swim. And I think Carl Malone did a great job. And I think it's the personalities that are really going to carry the match. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's all about Dennis the Rodman as well. Yes, the star power is what is going to carry that WrestleMania match, and they can make mistakes or whatever. I still think people are going to be focused on the star power, just like Hulk Hogan and The Rock at WrestleMania. Um, that wasn't technically a great match or anything, but it was all about the star power, and everyone remembers that match. Here we are. Um, how long has it been? 16 years later, and people still talk about it and remember fondly on that match. Um, so yeah, I'm, I think it, I think it'll turn out okay for everybody involved. And remember Aaron, I, I've heard this before on your channel about the Hogan and the rock match, the doing moves, certain moves and having certain high impact moves in a match isn't what makes it great. I know the rock and Hogan did very basic stuff in that match, but they used their larger than life characters to captivate that crowd that. So it was a great, it was a great match. Yeah. You know I mean, what I mean? You it, can't, when you make a back rake pop, the crowd, that's because you know how to work that crowd. Absolutely. But again, you're right. I, I do I do like and and maybe we'll get Cena and Undertaker. And that can be that 
similar type of realm there where they don't have to really go all out with moves, but just their characters well, will captivate New Orleans. Well, I mean, think about it. You got you got Cena versus Undertaker, possibly. That's not confirmed. But you got that match, which is going to have the star power. You have the Rousey match, which is going to have the star power. And for people that want the great technical wrestling, you're going to have AJ Styles, most likely, versus Shinsuke Nakamura. You're probably going to have the Usos against the Bludgeon Brothers, and people have been wanting Harper to get a big spot at WrestleMania. That could be a great match. So there's going to be a lot of great matches on the WrestleMania card. Plus, you're going to have the matches that are great because of the star power. So uh, this WrestleMania could end up being one of the better ones if, if WWE plays their cards right and everything goes according to plan. Um, I think it'll be, a- it'll be like 19 where you'll have something for everybody. People will be happy with the, the technical matches. They'll be happy with the star power driven matches. Kind of like WCW at some points when they had the really solid undercards and then the main event matches, you had the guys that could really go in the ring. So we'll, we'll see. I, I think WrestleMania has a lot of potential this year, uh, depending on how the build goes. What about this rumored match? And I'm going to throw it to you, Vito. Sami Zayn versus Kevin Owens at WrestleMania. Yay or nay? <laughs> Filler match. Filler All right. Match. right you, so basically you, you're telling me to go to this is Virtue's gimmick here. I'm stealing it. The main event. It's time for the main event. Yeah, and... Right. Yes. and I want to talk about Paul Heyman because he cut that promo. But here's what, on Monday Night Raw. Uh, he got cut off. Let's see, almost cut off by the Tupac Notorious B.I.G. TV show, whatever's on after Raw. But Heyman just tries to always outdo himself because he's cut 100 million promos. So he made the bell an inanimate object, a sexual object, the, the, the bitch, whatever. Um, you know, is he going to get, you know, sexual harassment for that? I don't know. But here's the thing with Paul Heyman. So we know there's controversy going around or they want controversy around Brock Lesnar because, you know, Brock's work ethic. He doesn't care about WWE. He'd rather be at home. Um, he had a third Brock Lesnar had a 35 second match at a house show in Chicago this past week or this past weekend fan. And it was advertised. Fans were irate. I think the whole Lesnar Heyman gimmick is getting stale. And so my main event here today is is it time for Paul Heyman to get a new client? Yes. So Vito, before you fall asleep on me, because I know we started with these fast lane predictions, that's the type of week we had. Go ahead. Talk about Paul Heyman. Talk about Lesnar getting stale. Going back to UFC 35 second match with Kane. A 35 second match that thought people uh, I thought the people got gypped because they came to see Brock Lesnar. I mean, and that's you need the hero there. People want their money's worth. It's the main event of the night. They want to see the suplex city, and uh, they didn't get their money's worth. So, okay, maybe bad on the WWE for that. Paul Heyman with a new guy. You know, his promo, like you said, his promos are always good. But you know what? Sometimes you, you strike a dud, fellas. And sometimes you, you over-talk yourself, but you have to spread yourself out amongst time. And when you have a lot of time, how much, you know, if you have two minutes, you know to get everything in a two-minute. But when you got seven, eight, nine minutes to cut a promo, that's a long time. So you got to come up with things off the top of your head. Could it have been better if it was shorter? But overall, okay, it was a dud. Okay, we get that. And your thing with, should Paul Heyman get a new guy? I think the perfect guy for Paul Heyman to get is Roman Reigns. Yeah. I would love that. At, what Vito, elaborate on that. I'm, I'm very interested in that, like that scenario there. So elaborate from a wrestler's perspective. How could You know how Roman doesn't get over like Vince McMahon wants him. How would that help Roman? Well, like, now, you're talking about the new kid on the block, and he's gone through everything that's possible. Fans don't give a shit about him. They boo him out of the building. You put an advocate, somebody who's a money ball player with him, who could speak on behalf of Roman Reigns, like Lesnar has. Now you have something. And what's to say Heyman can't give the fuck finish? Excuse me, guys. Uh Give the uh, the screw job to Lesnar and say he goes to 
shoved the belt in at the time, and instead of giving it to uh, to Lesnar, he gives it to Reigns. Reigns looks at him. He hits Brock with the belt, throws it out. One, two, three. We got a new champion, and we got a whole another two or three years of Roman Reigns being the top dog, and that's his yard. And then Paul Heyman cutting a promo instead of Roman Reigns talking. You just saved the t- number one spot for the guy. And then you have Braun Strowman in the, in the wings as the, the, uh, the baby face. So now you have another promo. You have another guy to play with. So And if, Le- if Bobby Lashley is coming back and you have Roman Reigns and Paul Heyman. And then there's a rematch with Brock Lesnar who's now a maniac and a baby face on top of it. You just hit a home run by putting Paul Heyman with Roman Reigns. Yeah. Great points, yeah. Vito. Go ahead, Aaron. I was hey, just going to say, I, Vito's thinking far ahead, thinking of the future and some possible scenarios. I love it. I mean, I would love to see a double cross at WrestleMania. And let's face it, I, I, I don't know what you guys think, but I don't, I don't think the crowd is going to turn against Lesnar at WrestleMania. I think, I think the fans know better. Um, they know WWE's trying to play them and, and get them to cheer for Reigns. It might work in some cities, but at WrestleMania with your most diehard fans there, I don't, I don't think this plan is going to work. I think Lesnar is going to get cheered. I think, I think Roman Reigns is still going to get booed. I say stop fighting it. Just make the change. Have Heyman double-cross Lesnar. You know, Lesnar's been around for a while. He's getting, he's getting up there. How old is he now? Close to 40? He's, he's getting old. You know, you have a perfect storyline there where... Heyman can say Lesnar's washed up and he's moving on to the next big thing. The next big thing, of course, Roman Reigns. And then you got, like Vito said, you got Lashley, you got Braun Strowman, who the crowd loves. The crowd loves Braun Strowman, so Braun Strowman is a babyface against the heel Reigns with uh, Paul Heyman. I love it. I think it's a great idea. El Virtuoso, anything else you would like to add to that? I mean, besides Heyman doing that, I, I think... To be honest, that Reigns will probably just go over. Heyman will, and Lesnar will disappear for a while. Yeah. Uh, interestingly enough, and again, we'll probably be talking about this four or five years from now, and it still hasn't happened. I think the one guy that that would have to be with Heyman is if WWE and CM Punk ever get the itch for each other again. That's where you bring Paul to make, you know, hey, I, I got something. You guys aren't going to believe this. Hype it up for several weeks and. He's the one that brings his boy back. But, uh, you know, I mean, I'm going to go with you guys. That's, that's, that would be a great WrestleMania finish to have Paul do that. Absolutely. And, that, that and was- I'm, I'm sure people will put in the comments what they think. You know, we're probably going to get a lot of CM Punk. So, you know, we want him to bring CM Punk back. But really, we know that's between Vince and CM Punk. Yeah. But I think, I think that would actually create a lot of positive buzz. People would be excited and they would be telling their friends, Roman Reigns finally turned and he's with Paul Heyman. That would, that would bring up the ratings and that would generate more interest in WWE. I think that that would be a great move. I think that that would, that would get fans excited about WWE. And it feels like there's all this hype for WrestleMania every year and then WrestleMania, it's the same thing. Roman Reigns wins and people quickly lose interest again. This time, you do something like this, all of a sudden, you're going to have people interested in sticking around past WrestleMania and maybe, just maybe, even create some new fans. Who knows? Now, here's I'm going to throw this one in there because um, I, I want to, you know, hit a little more time. I don't, I don't know how close we are to our hour, Aaron. I, I was thinking Hulk Hogan because you brought him up earlier with his match against The Rock. Speaking of WrestleMania and speaking of controversies that keep people out of jobs, Vito, when and if... Will WWE bring the Hulkster back? I mean, they have to. He he made Vince McMahon a lot of money. He's an icon. Um, to me, that stuff blew over already in my mind. You know, from my perspective. Go ahead. What do you think on Hulk Hogan? Hulk Hogan coming back, yeah. But it just seems like that. It just seems like the ship has passed for him to come back, and for him to come back now with. No preparation, no build up just for him to show up. It's going to be like thumbs down. I think you would have to put a couple of things in place, a couple of promos, him to be an ambassador, him to show up at house shows or WWE events, for Hogan to show up at the Saudi Arabia Royal Rumble and be one of the entrants. 
I think that place would go well, absolutely bananas. Yeah. But I think they need to inch him back in in that capacity before they put him on the main screen. But if you're talking putting Hulk Hogan in that battle royal, the 50-man battle royal, you're talking you got something. And those people, that place would become unglued. unglued. Oh, yeah. That yeah, because be really- he's a worldwide f- – He's a worldwide icon, you know. I mean, he really is. And, you know, Cody Rhodes said something interesting this past week. I saw, too. Um, you know, a lot of people, you know how wrestlers like to put themselves over and that, you know, they're everybody knows who they are. You have athletes like the NFL players, basketball players, but you also have so many different sports in so many different countries. Everybody knows the worldwide sport is soccer, right? But Cody said an interesting point that a lot of, like a wrestler is more known in various countries throughout the world than sometimes athletes are. So, like, is that is that true? And, and again, me thinking of Hulk Hogan and you, Vito, saying having him show up at Saudi Arabia for that event would be huge. Is that is Cody Rhodes right when he says that about wrestlers? Well, when I you went to the, the world. When I went to Nepal... And you guys remember when I went to Nepal and I was in, um, I started that riot over there. My face was all over the billboards over there. And uh, the main event, we drew over twenty to 25,000 people. They knew and who you Big were Vito also was. that show in, in um, Spain where the Ultimate Warrior had his last match. Right. right. And that was 16,000. Yeah. And we were in Malta. And we drew another 10,000. And you talk about going to these, far, these, uh, these countries. They know exactly who you are. They watch TV. They they watch the network. So when you go there and you're showing up and it's WWE Big Vito or WWE Hulk Hogan or WWE Kurt Angle, they already know. So I mean, you're 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 a walking celebrity. You know what I mean? So they already know you're going to be there, and it, it's a good thing. And you know what? These people don't have anything like that because they lack entertainment. So when they see something like this, they're gonna flock to it. Yeah, that's a really. Aaron, idea. you want to add? Yeah, you want to add to that on Hulk and uh, what Cody Rhodes said about wrestlers. Well, I'm just I'm curious about the Hall of Fame because Hillbilly Jim is going in, and who's going to induct him? I mean, Hulk Hogan is the first name that comes to mind for me with possible people to induct him. Who else would induct him? El Virtuoso. Who do Godwin. you think? Godwin's. Oh, come on. I know, but I mean, what? Come on. I don't know. I, I, I really I don't, don't know. know. Hillbilly Jim really doesn't have anybody to induct him, but they did show a promo with Hogan on there. Yeah. So that could be his way to get back in at the Hall of Fame. It's yeah. a um, a mature, elegant way to break him back in at a prestigious event. For the people to see him calm and not ripping his shirt off, but to actually come as a classy guy endorsing somebody. Exactly. Yeah, putting over his friend and, and uh, putting the spotlight on Hillbilly Jim. So may- maybe that's what's going to happen. Because, yeah, I thought it was really interesting that Hogan's was shown so prominently in that, that video package for him. Yeah, that, I mean, that would be a good way to inch him back, like you said, Vito. Kind of make that a nice little pleasant surprise. And he's going to come back and only say good things about Hillbilly Jim. You know, it's not like he's going to have to come back and cut a Hulk Hogan promo. It's it's putting someone over getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. Plus, he's a member of the Hall of Fame as well. So, yeah, you know, with that said, that's pretty much all we have this week. Uh, anything else you guys would like to discuss? If not, we can always save well, it for next you did mention Cody Rhodes, and uh, they did announce the All In event for Chicago. They're going to be running a eleven thousand seat building. Uh, the question is, will they be able to pack that arena or not? And of course, everyone's speculating about CM Punk, and um, I wonder if there's going to be anything to that or not. Um, El Virtuoso, do you think they have a shot at, at filling that building? Well, I, I honestly don't. Is it tied to a company or just Cody Rhodes? It's just Cody Rhodes and the Young Bucks, and they got. I, think, I, you know, I mean, they have Omega. a following. Uh, they do have a following, but I don't know half of that, in my opinion. I think in order to do that, you got to strike a deal with CM Punk, but the money he probably would ask to do anything wrestling, because he's writing comic books, guys. So, but you, you bring a Punk into the equation, and, and since you mentioned Punk. 
what what are both of your thoughts on Daniel Bryan? Because I hear the rumors stirring up more and more and more about him leaving, going to New Japan. This guy wants to wrestle again. Yeah, you've got you've talked about it before, Vito. So, what's your thoughts on that, Cody Rhodes? They need somebody like Punk. I or, think I think that they're going to have an ace in the hole. You don't rent an eleven thousand seat building without having a major star come. Who if do you think? Get, I would say they can get Punk to make an appearance. He doesn't have yeah. to wrestle. All he's got to do is show up. And it could hype his next UFC thing too, because isn't he going to be fighting again? Not even, not even the UFC. All he's got to do is make an appearance, cut a promo. Well, I'm back. It's all he's got to say. Yeah, because in a wrestling ring, that people are gonna, that's gonna go bonkers. Right, and then people are not gonna know where he's gonna be, where he's gonna do. So now you just caught interest, and you just whatever money he's gonna get from the young bucks, and you know, and uh. Cody Rhodes, okay. How much are you gonna pay the guys? Eleven thousand seat arena. How much are the the tickets? A hundred bucks a piece. So you're talking about a hundred and ten thousand dollar gate. How much can you pay the guy? You got to rent the building. I say fifteen thousand. You got to get a ring. A B C D. What are you gonna give the guy? Twenty thousand. Twenty five thousand. And come say hey. Yeah, I mean, but if he takes a lower amount just to, you know, get himself out there to pop a crowd, you know, he, who and knows? Plus, he might... he's, probably, he's probably friends with the Young right. Bucks because that's their, yeah. their click. That's their, yeah. their thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's in with them. Could so, you imagine so, him coming out in a Bullet Club shirt? I mean, look, see, we're, pe people are going to be loving this. Well, yeah, I think, I'll I tell think you if he was going to do it, he would do it to help his friends out and, and uh, <laughs> help them draw that yeah. big crowd just so, you know, to support his, his buddies. No, Good for sure, guys. Good points. All right, Vito, do you got anything you want to tell everybody? Just everybody go to bigvito.com. You'll find all my stuff there. Guys, go have a good time. I have an Amazon list. You feel like donating a gift or making me happy, go pick something out there, and it'll be much appreciated. Look what you did, cool. El Virtuoso. You put, you put Vito to sleep. Good job. Yeah, Vito, Vito, were you working out before the show today? I figured. Yeah, I was at the yeah. gym. So how many squats did you do? I was just going to ask. Uh, because 500, you 500, 500 yeah. again. Nice. Very nice. Very nice. Aaron, how many squats did you do? Zero. But I did run today. I did run a couple miles. So I did get something in. Anyways, uh, check out bigvito.com for all that good stuff. And follow Jexy at Jexy Rocks. I'll plug her stuff since she's not here. Hopefully she'll be back next week. No more sending pictures of your zucchini or whatever you were sending her. El erroneous erroneous on all counts it was mexican cuisine recipes keep your guacamole to yourself paisan <laughs> exactly do you have a twitter or, or instagram no, i don't anything? have any i don't have any of that stuff you can see me on these videos on the no dq aaron Russ youtube page taking over for virtue for the next several weeks yeah, hopefully All it'll right. be the four of us next week. Hopefully I'm not missing. And earlier, week. and earlier, so Vito, it's not past Vito's bedtime. I'm actually getting sleepy myself. So well, thanks, we, Aaron, we, for making yep. it so late. Not my fault. That's all I. That's all I got. Thank you, Vito. Thank all you, right, Mr. guys. Smith. And if I haven't won you over, Vito, that's all right. You know, Virtue will come back and kick me out eventually down the road again. Anyway, so no DQ Galaxy. See you next week. <laughs>